Again, we do welcome you back to Golf Talk of the Carolinas. And, uh, guys, right now we've got uh, Zane Lewis that will be on the line with us. A young man just qualified through the first stage. Wow. Of the U.S. Open qualifier up there at uh, Duke University. You got to uh, do some good golf to do that. Yeah, one under par 71, very difficult golf course on a difficult day, but uh, got through there and uh, now on his way to the, uh, I guess, the final qualifier uh, coming up here in a couple of weeks. But uh, we do have uh, Zane Lewis on the line with us. Uh, Zane, welcome to Golf Talk of the Carolinas. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me tonight. Listen, it's great to have you. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, – you're around at Duke last week. I know you had to be uh, awfully excited with that. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of things been playing through my mind. Um, last last week has been really wild for me. Um, I mean, I just I guess the main thing was just keeping it steady, um, keeping the ball in play, not having any penalty strokes, not not making any three putts. Um, it did actually come down to. The last putt for me on at the 18th hole, um, I had about a 30, 35 footer for birdie. And at the time, I did not know what it was for. Um, cause I was, I was the third tee time off number one. They did split tees on one and 10 between eight o'clock and eight and 10, 10. And I was the 820 tee time. So there were still 50 or 60 guys left on the course. Um, but I knew with as difficult as it was playing, the greens were rolling about a 12. The pins were tucked on nearly every single hole. So I knew there had to be some some trouble out there waiting for guys. And I just had to keep reminding myself to just stay steady, not try to push for anything, because that's when the big numbers would come. Um, I mean, it was just very surreal to be to be in that spot, for one. And to actually um, be able to execute that last putt and and get it done um, is very really 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 exciting. So you made the thirty footer. Is, is, I did. I did. I and, like um, that. Well, listen. I, like just I a said, little bit of background about you for our listeners. Uh, uh, Doug, it, what was it? I guess about October. We went over yeah. and ate at Davidson's, yeah. and uh, uh, Zane's over waiting on us. Sure was. Brought us our yeah. steak. Sure did. I know he misses it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So uh, anyway, uh, a, a local waiter here at Davidson's, and of course you went to school up at uh, North Carolina Central. You got to work at Duke some, and I, and I guess that was uh, that probably was a big help uh, when you went around in that round last week. Very much so. Um, it just it gave me a little bit more appreciation for how difficult the golf course is, and um, how well you have to play out there. Because I, I knew going into it, missing greens was going to be detrimental to the round. I mean, where they had the pins, if you if you missed the green, nine out of ten times, you probably were not going to get it up and down. Um, mm. So I just I had to be really smart on where I was going to miss shot. Because um, as we know, golf is a game of misses. We're not going to hit the perfect shot every time. Um, so it was really just um, pinpointing those those good misses and where I could go to ha to give myself the best opportunity to either get it up and down or just make a Easy two putt and keep it rolling. Talent, um, talent, and discipline seems you got a little bit of both. That's good, young man. Yeah, sometimes yeah, golf, uh, sometimes golf is not meant to be all out. You know, there's a lot of strategy based on the golf course, and the harder a golf course plays, sometimes conservative play is the way to score. Um, may not be as low, but uh, at least you forget, you avoid mistakes, and it sounds like that's what you were striving to do last no week doubt. where are you going for the regional um so my top so you get to pick your three you get to pick three out of the 11 locations correct and my first choice was dallas athletic club yes i've been there my second my second choice was the bears club down in jupiter florida Ooh, good one. and my third choice was the piedmont club in georgia okay and, and when will you find that out um you know it's kind of up in the air um, I've, asked, I've talked to a couple other guys who have made it through the local, and they've told me that normally you won't get that email until all of the local qualifiers are done. Right. And it's, it's kind of, um, it's a little rough for me just because the last local qualifier is May 18th. And if I were to go to Dallas, the Dallas sectional is May 24th. So it kind of gives me a little very little time to 
to plan. You know, if I wanted to go down there a week early, per se, um, it would kind of be me just taking a chance and, and hoping I get that Dallas spot. If I were to go ahead and go ahead and travel down there. Um, so I'm hoping I get that email sooner than later. But um, with it being one of the first local qualifiers, with me signing up the day that the entry opens, I'm hoping that I get my first choice because it does say on the little certificate I got, it does say that sectional qualifying locations will be based off of entry registration priority. So like I said, I did sign up the very first day. Um, so I'm hoping I get that Dallas location just because that, that week is actually when the Colonial, uh, when they play at Colonial. So I'm thinking that a lot of the, a lot of the PGA Tour guys that didn't get an exemption will probably be at that qualifying location. It just well, kind of makes sense. Um, so I think that would be a really good test to see where I'm at. Um, I mean, I'm play too, if, if, yeah, there's going to uh, be more spots there too right. if the I, I local so, the yeah, so. sectional qualifier. Oh. Listen, I got to ask you. I got to ask you a question. I, I know your boss, and uh, okay, yeah. and uh, I guess you're gonna have to take a bunch of days off here coming up. See, is he good with all that? So I have actually the the day after I qualified, um, I put my two weeks in uh -oh. with Mike, and he was very understanding. And Mike has been more than supportive and very very good to me through this whole process, even before. I started, I guess, quote unquote, making noise and making things happen. Um, I mean, I, I had asked off 18 days in two months and Mike had absolutely zero bad things to say about it. He gave me no slack for it. Um, he, he truly understands what I'm trying to do and he knows that working with him has just been a stepping stone for me and he's not, he, he's not holding me back in any way. He is, he is. I mean, he has given me so much opportunity to to do this. Um, so he's he's been he's been very supportive of it. Um, Listen, as far you, as need I to, can tell. you need to get you a little uh, Davidson Stakes sticker and stick it on your golf bag. I, <laughs> no like doubt, that. I know, yeah. I know, Mike. He'd like Davidson that. Davidson Stakes hat. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Well, Zane, listen, we are proud of you. A great job uh, up at uh, Duke last week, and. Uh, uh, I know you don't know when it's coming yet, and obviously we don't either, but uh, whenever it gets here, I uh, hope you're ready and uh, keep uh, keep fun in the equation and uh, have a good time and enjoy it, but uh, work hard as well. That's yeah, and we good. want you on the show. Uh, when is the when is the sectional qualifier? It would either be May 24th is the Dallas one, and then the, the, the Florida and Georgia one are both June 7th. Okay, so we'll talk right. to you on June eighth, and yes, uh, we want to hear. How, we want to know. We, we're cheering for you. I pre I really appreciate it, guys. All right. Well, listen. Uh, thank you so much for talking with us, and uh, again, congratulations. Great job, and good luck. Thank you so much, y'all. Thank you for having me. All righty, that's uh, Zane Lewis from right here in yeah. Little Old Sanford. You Over know, here. Doug. I think uh, he's got the perfect recipe. If you sign up first for these tournaments, there's a good chance you finish first. And that's where we've been missing. Several years. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you got it figured out. He signed up first, and he was first. Yeah. yeah well, so, I, I'm yeah. impressed that somebody aims away from flags. So I'm, I just love discipline and a great talent. I, I don't see it much. But good for him. He's a good kid. Um, I'm, I'm sure he misses weight and, and tables. <laughs> <laughs> you think he does? <laughs> I, I bet he does. <laughs> I bet he'd rather be playing but golf. Mike Davidson's top notch, too. So, yes, you know, he is. Hey, yes, he is. Well, Mike's letting him off and all that. I wouldn't think of anything but that. You know, I, I would expect Mike to do that, and I bet he's pulling for him as hard as Zane's family is. So well, you know, and the, and the thing about what Zane's done is, you know, getting through the qualifier now is going to th – th this is a big deal. It I sure mean, is. It's a really big deal. deal. If you no make question. it, it's a super big deal. No question. Uh, but regardless of whether – He's already he, achieved a big deal. Yeah, whether yeah. he makes it or not, I hope he'll go there with the attitude of enjoying the trip. Well, because uh, because it's a memory he's going to have – Forever, forever, regardless of how that's it plays. Right. And, that's right. You know, go and enjoy the trip, work hard. That's right. You know what? Something good might happen. That's I mean, right. That's, Just uh, work your hardest, take a shot at a time, and, and, and take the result, whatever that is. Exactly. Yeah. You are listening to Golf Talk of the Carolinas. We're going to take our top of the hour break, and when we come back, we're going to do some exercising. We'll be right back. 